What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what is my pre-market routine? What am I looking for in the charts before the 9.30 open where I'm actually looking to take a trade? Uh, everyday traders should have some kind of pre-market ritual, pre-market routine that you have to be profitable. And I'll be honest with you guys, my routine has gotten a lot shorter and I kind of almost sit down five minutes before the market open, but also I've been doing it for 10 years. So I kind of know what I'm looking for all the time. So I'm looking for the same things every day. But if you're a beginner, you definitely should buy yourself about 20 to 30 minutes before the, you're actually going to be taking trades to look at the market and understand what potentially could be going on. Now, one of the things that I like to do before even talking about the charts is have a iced coffee. An iced coffee, when I sit on a mask, it's going to be like one of those things that if you have your first sip of coffee, it's almost like you do that every day and it kind of puts you in that work mode and it puts you in the right mindset. You need to find something that's going to put you in that mindset that you kind of... Uh, it's kind of like a pre-workout when you go to the gym or just something. I find that for myself, at least very helpful. I like to have that kind of pre-market ritual, whatever you want to call it. I just really like it. And that's, you know, besides the charts or besides uh, any sort of thing, right? So that's one of the, thing, the few things that I like to do. Now, next up, when I stay on the charts, uh, right now I'm recording this, it's actually the weekend, so there's no pre-market session going on, but we'll take any random session. For example, we'll take this Tuesday session here. I like to mark what is the current um, highest point of the pre-market session and the current lowest point of the pre-market session. As you can see here, this was Tuesday, right? So that means the session ended on the Monday prior and with the, sen the session will be the end of the day prior. Uh, uh, right here, you have that gap. You see that 70 to 18 gap. So your market open will be right there or pre-market open will be right there all the way to the 9.30 of, sorry, that was, uh, that was the you know, Monday all the way to 9.30 we'll go, so right here. So all the, and you know, you're probably recording this a little bit before, you know, you're gonna be sitting down at 9.20. So in this case, you'll have your pre-market low. For, for the session, you see your low being right there. And you, in this, in, in this case, the high was about right here. So you see the high kinda real close, you're, you're trading around those current highs. So you like to have the pre-market lows and the pre-market highs. And this kind of tells you what range you're in, where you're expected and potential liquidity sweeps to be taken from the lows uh, to the highs. As well, any major for all gaps lined up, you know, the, near the lows. So in this case, you have uh, right here with a five minute, but you can see this five minutes are lined up. I would mark all the five minutes that are bunched up together. It was more likely this was a 15 minute for all gap. So jump it as you can see on the 15 you can see that lines up as a 50 minute for value yeah and even maybe 30 minutes uh, also I like to look to a couple different time frames because you'll notice with different time frames it kind of gives you a different different perspective like that five minute you might have seen something and the 50 minutes it might be more clear or 30 minutes hourly uh, whatever it is it might be a, a lot more clear now uh, I think that I like to look for whenever we're trading within the pre-market ranges is look for a breakout of the range. So a breakout of the range usually will tell me that a trend will more likely continue. In this case, this was your top of your range, the bottom of your range. As you can see, you stayed in there, you were pretty choppy. You had this nice bounce. And it's actually a trade that I took live with the team. This bounce here, it's very value gap with a golden pocket. Uh, if you look at the golden pocket, it's kind of besides the point, but just to show you guys, it was a trade that I took with the team to take out the highs and then, uh, and then, um, yeah, it was a nice win. Uh, but whenever we're trading within the pre-market range, I'm not looking for home runs. Because within the pre-market range, you're usually gonna be seeking at the top of the liquidity or the bottom of the liquidity of the pre-market ranges uh, to get taken out and then go back into the range. Uh, well, you wanna clear break and hold of one or two ranges to really continue a trend. In this case, you do see a heat around 2 p.m. You do get it, you got a nice break above. This candle give you the confirmation and then you know, it's kind of extended to the after hours, but you can see um, there's a much bigger move here than you had within this range. So you do, uh, it's something I do like to think about. If I'm trading within range, I'm not looking for home runs because more than likely it might be an inside day for that day, which in this case you see, uh, you, you, would you catch a nice cup, but it was not like a huge winner uh, would, like you would get some other days. Now, um, I'm also gonna be looking at the daily opening gaps, if there is any. So that is the gap that um, the close of the previous day and the open of 
today of the current pre-market session we we'll have left in this case it would have been uh, if there was any it would have been right here right and as you can see price actually came to hold up this level earlier you know it got, it got held up right there so that is something that i like to draw uh, also hold the previous day close or the closing price of the previous day you can simply click on if you're if you're using a um, trim view cl right click on your numbers right here and go to settings yep. see this many times previous day close you can just turn this on and it would uh, plot one out for you as you can see i plotted out this one but it's because for the session closure right and it's going to mark out um uh, uh, the close for ES for the you know this was the day the day prior, so it would have been the Thursday close and then Friday this was Friday and then Monday I'll get it and you can see here look like well I got it respected it's coming back to the previous day and then boom bounce so you that's gonna be one of your uh, magnets of where the market wants to head to uh, so it's very important to have it run out and now for example this is currently the Friday right so this is the Friday close so we're going over the weekend. The weekly uh you also have to you know you can also draw out so this will be a weekly close and i can have that drawn out for the coming week so if you're doing this on the weekend make sure you draw it out that's very important now i like to know if there's any rare folders so you go to something for its factory and you know for example you have all you can look at all any any uh, rare folders now i like to only look for certain ones that are going to be important. One's going to be the red folders that are only USD. Uh, here you have USD because I'm trading NASDAQ and uh, yes, if you're trading some, I don't know, you have some Canadian share, uh, Canadian euro or whatever, CHV, I don't know. You can look for those red folders. But for me, it's only going to be important uh, USD ones. And the two I'm going to be looking for now, these times are going to be a little funny here because uh, I'm currently um, in Europe. But usually this tool, imagine this roll EST times. Uh, so I'm looking for the 10 a.m. EST uh, red folders, the 8.30 a.m. EST folders. Uh, there's going to be your two, two, two main times you're going to find there's going to be a lot of red folders. Of course, you'll have FOMC as well, which is going to be a 2 p.m. Uh, EST once a month. Uh, except one month out of the year, I forget, I think take August off, I think it is. Uh, and those are going to be times that I might want to avoid trading. Uh, because it's going to be very volatile or it's going to be times for example here we had uh, a red folder on Friday uh, I think it was at 10 a.m. the at 10 a.m. red folder and you can see look at this candle at 10 a.m. right you can use this candle to understand it that was a new candle right so you can uh, uh, mark that candle for example uh, and I don't think it was a really like important red folder uh, so price kind of came down and sliced through it, but some red folders are more important than others. Some the ones that you want to look for is CPI, uh, PPI, and employment claims can be quite important. Uh, the real state of the economy. So <clears throat> make sure you keep you, you know you, you keep an eye on those, especially if you're going to be holding a trade through those. And also the 8:30 ones. Once you know the market opens, a lot of times they can hold a support and resistance or. Uh, just a level that the market wants to target to retrace to. <coughs> now, another thing I like to look for is um, go down, you know, go, go look at my larger time frames. I know I talked about the 15 minutes already. But also keep, you know, use that pre market time that I'm not in a trade and I'm managing a trade to remind myself, like, what is the overall trend? Or, you know, what is likelihood for a larger time frame to play out? Sometimes once we actually in a trade, we get so micro focused on the one minute, three minute, five minute. And we do need to look back and take a look at the larger time frames from point to point, from time to time. And I'm not saying to have a bias that you're only going to trade that singular, um, just that one bias. But it is to like understand, for example, here you're like, hey, I had this huge, you know, move up. You move up here and I build this huge for, for value gap here. And this is Tuesday was right here. And I'm like, hey, I filled this. And now I'm starting to make a bottom. I might, you know, price my store and go make higher lows and higher highs in this four hours. And then you can draw your key points of support and resistance. For example, that fair value gap that we, that we drew on the 15 minute time frame, which lines up with the bullish fair value gap, lines up along that certain area with a four hour being bullish, right? And then we know where we can target. Like here we can. You can target you know the top of this candle whatever it might be 
sometimes if you can do this in a pre-market much easier because you're not really in any trade and you know you're not going to take any trades. But sometimes when you're in a trade on oh, a five minute, one minute, it's just going to be it's just going to be too much. Now, so other things I like to draw is if I go let's go back to our Tuesday example. I should probably kept those orange lines, but you know it is what it is. I like to draw my fib of. Okay, remember this is the low to the high to the high of the range. My Fibonacci. So from the low, this was the 920, right? I draw it and I'm looking for, okay, where's gonna be my tier extensions and where's gonna be potentially my golden pocket retracement? Does it line up with somebody else? In this case, hey, it lined up with that 15 minute free value gap that we drew to the, to, the, to the T, to the T lined up, as you can see, and as well as the level of liquidity, right? Uh, I knew we talked about the pre-market low and the high, but we also gotta mark the pre-market equal lows if there is any and equal highs. Example here with all these equal lows right here, and as well as this low right here with the small t um, three equal lows right there, right? And the Fervali gap was there. Now, for example, here we did not have any Fervali gaps, so it would have not been an area that we're looking for long. So I would have deleted that if I'm not interested in it, but this I would have been definitely interested in it. So this comes down, takes out a level, hits into your key area that you draw on your pre market, you had your golden pocket, your Fervali gap, you had your liquidity there. Bada bing, bada bing, and then boom, now you enter on your first uh, one minute or two minute, three minute, the smallest time frame that you like to trade for uh, your actual entry. You get your entry, and boom, you're good to go. And it's all work you could have done before the market uh, opened, and then you would have had your pre market high right here as your target, right? Isn't that, isn't that so easy? So you enter your inversion or on the retest right here, just for probably got. Excuse me. Target that high. Your stop loss would have been, let's say, that fair value gap right there, or this low that you used. That's an easy little trade you could have taken using uh, pre market strategy. Drawing your pre market high, lows, liquidity levels, fair value gaps, and then you go, your Fibonacci retracements and look at it to your extension. Give you somewhat of a move towards the end of the day. You tap right into 15 20, give you a nice move till the end of the day, your TR extension. So, drawing all this and without you rushing and trying to micromanage every one minute candle because you didn't do your homework before. And guess what? It's straight lined up with the overall bias you would have had in the four hours you would have looked on the pre market. Right? Mm. Also, being able to manage it, see what Tuesday what the Tuesday would have been like oh, when you can do your Forex factory. No, 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 no red folders here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess you had this. 4 uh, p.m. one should be 10 a.m. red folder right there. But look, that was the same kind of give you the retracement. We just talked about it. You know your red folders. Let's say you didn't want to take the trade right here. But look, you got that re-entry as a magnet, that candle, retracement candle. Because it was a new, a new candle uh, to look for the highs. So it's all to look for. Um, it should, not, should only take you about 20 minutes as long as this video took you to watch for you to implement this pre-market routine and kind of the things I like to watch for in the pre-market. Hope this video helped. If you actually allow me every single day, I do so in a private Discord. Make sure you hit the link down below and claim code 39 for $39 in your first month. As always, peace out.